Alright, howdy guys, Nature Nerds back again. So this time, I got a Nile monitor right here with me. His name is Mike, he's one of my educational animals. And while they're not normally found in Texas, they're actually in Africa, we're gonna be talking a little bit about them. This is a quite young Nile monitor, or Varanus niloticus. These guys can be found throughout Sub-Saharan Africa um, and along the Nile River. These lizards are one of the largest in Africa, getting seven plus feet long or two and a half meters. That's a big lizard, that's bigger than I am. So some more characteristics of Nile monitors that I can show you up close now here, is if you see, they have these rows of spots on their back, and Nile monitors actually have exactly seven rows in between the shoulders and the hips. So we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And each Nile monitor has that. If you have less or more than that, it's an ornate Nile monitor, which is another type of species. So if you see, his eyelid closed like that, they have a second eyelid right there uh, for whenever they're swimming and it protects their eye from water or any other debris in the water and the surrounding environment. And they also have this really long forked tongue. Let's see if I, we can get a tongue shot. There we go. So that right there, is how they find their food. That tongue is how they sense which direction their food is in. And if uh, scent particles, because that's all that smelling is, is picking up particles with your nose, or your tongue, in this case. Uh, and the same thing in snakes. If there's more particles on the right side of the tongue than on the left side, then they'll know to go right. And vice versa, they'll know to go left. And so they are extraordinary at finding their prey. And he really wants to go into the grass behind me. But I'm not going to let them do that. Another reason that these guys are so successful in the wild is they have these very sharp claws for digging, um, defensive strategies, and just for catching prey. These guys have a very long tail, as you can see, that's quite powerful, that they use A for swimming, which we'll see in the swimming demonstration, and B, uh, they can actually whip you with their tail, and it leaves a bruise. And that's one of their defensive strategies. The first defensive strategy that they'll do is they'll try and puff up and look big and bad. They're going to arch their back, they're going to inflate this part right here, and they're going to hiss, and it's loud, and they're going to tell you that they're upset. And then, if that doesn't work, they'll whip you with the tail. After that, they will spray you with excrement from their cloaca, uh, which smells quite bad, and deters most things, including me. And then after that, they'll try and bite you, if you're still messing with them. Hi. But as you can see, Mike is my friend. And he only does that about every other day. So these guys can be found throughout several different types of habitats, such as uh, dry savanna, scrubs, woodlands, even swamps and wetlands. Uh, but they're almost always generally found near water. Even up in the Saharan Desert, the only place you'll find them there is along the Nile River in North Africa. So these guys have gotten quite uh, used to urban environments. Uh, where people live and many times locals will complain of them actually eating their chickens uh, which is kind of an interesting problem to have a giant lizard eating your chicken these guys will actually dig burrows um, to live in and they'll either excavate it themselves or they'll find one previously excavated by another animal and live in that when reproducing they only breed once a year but they can have 35 plus eggs each year with little baby Niles that are about this long, they have so many babies because a lot of them actually become prey to many different types of animals, ranging from crocodiles, uh, snakes, birds of prey, uh, even smaller mammals. But really, the adults, the only thing they have to worry about is larger constrictors, such as rock pythons, uh, and crocodiles that live in the area. Nothing else is really going to mess with a seven-foot lizard. According to a study done by some African scientists, uh, Nile monitors eat mostly aquatic uh, prey, such as mollusks, crustaceans, amphibians, fish, and they have this 
quite strong jaw meant for cracking open the shells of crustaceans or mollusks. And because of this prey that they eat, which is mostly aquatic, they are amazing swimmers. Alright, so a lot of people get these in the pet trade uh, to keep in captivity. And while they can make amazing pets that are very sociable, uh, most people see a $20 price tag on a lizard about this big and they think, oh my god, that's so cute, right? I mean, they are quite cute. They don't see the seven foot lizard that needs an eight foot enclosure, at least, with a large water feature and a basking spot of 120 to 140 degrees, right? They also don't see the seven foot lizard that, if he wanted to, could just about rip a finger off. These guys have a powerful bite and can do quite a bit of damage if they want to. Thankfully, this guy likes me on a good day. Um, and today's a good day. So he's actually gonna come up here and sit on my shoulder and not go into the grass. I said not go into the So as you can see, these guys can be quite nice. And this is actually an educational animal that I rescued. Uh, somebody just got a small lizard and then the lizard kept growing. And then they freaked out and they couldn't take care of him anymore. So he came to me and I've had him about four months and I've been socializing him and making sure that he's gotten nice and now he's actually an educational animal that goes to shows with me and helps expose people to animals like this that they might not get to experience otherwise. So his name is Mike. Here we have some neat footage of Mike exploring the puddle as I try to get him to swim. He obviously doesn't swim here uh, because it's too shallow, but it's still some neat shots. So I want to talk to you. Uh, in 2005, Dr. Brian Fry published findings that all monitor lizards actually have venom glands and therefore are technically venomous. But before you go freaking out that they're even more dangerous than before, their venom is not what you think of when you hear the word venom. It's more of a digestion aid and Nile monitor venom doesn't have much effect on humans. Now. Enjoy some footage of Mike walking around, and then we'll go to another creek and watch how he swims. So I came out here to this creek just to show y'all a little bit of how he can swim. Uh, if I just let him swim on his own, I would probably lose him. So instead I'm going to hold on to his tail and we're going to get some nice footage, hopefully, of him swimming. Alright, you ready for this? So, as you can see, he moves his legs and he presses them up against his body and then he's going to use this giant tail as a paddle. Yeah, he does that side to side motion. So this is how they swim in the wild. Go. Okay. And he can swim much faster than this if he wants to. I'm kind of happy he's not. This is just a casual stroll through the park. And there we go. That went pretty well. <laughs> 